I was lucky enough to live through the boom of browser games. With the rise of websites like Miniclip and Newgrounds, there were many great games and independent creators to choose from. From fully fleshed out RPGs like Sunny, to action classics like Matrix Bullet Time. There was Slime Olympics, where you could play a variety of two-player sport games using one keyboard. The games came in every genre, from arcade to RPG to point-and-click adventure games and games based around narratives. Many of these games have been lost to time, but the role they played to shape my tastes and preferences cannot be denied. Playing these browser games was one of my favorite pastimes, and you needed little more than a computer and an internet connection. These games were so popular that many of the websites offered to buy games from new creators, even if it was their first project. Now browser games aren't as popular, being largely replaced by mobile and indie games. However, these websites still exist, and there are still some gem games, such as A Dark Room and Sort the Court. A Dark Room is a simple minimalist text adventure game. As you stoke the fire and click on the game's prompts, it slowly expands in scope, moving from a lonely cave to a few huts to a fully functioning village. You gather materials, craft, trade, and build, learning more about the world around you. As you continue to play, the game changes in genre. There is a sense of progression and increased tension as the game switches from simple text to a full-fledged adventure game with ASCII graphics. You adventure and explore the land surrounding your town. It is impressive how vibrant the world becomes, represented by the simple symbols on your screen. A Dark Room is a semi-idle game, balancing patience and adventure. You build your village and stockpiles up as you map the world. The main gameplay consists of waiting for prompts to come off cooldown so that you can press them again, and this is a satisfying loop, something you can check back on after a couple of hours. The developers, Doublespeak Games, have a few other fun games such as a bejeweled zombie game, Gridland, and Penrose, a non-linear text adventure where you manipulate the text and plot. Doublespeak really show that even a simple concept done well can be effective. Another exceptional browser game is Sort the Court. The game's premise is easy to understand at a glance. You are royalty sitting on your throne. You judge situations by responding either yes or no, positively or negatively. You sort through the various interactions involving your kingdom and the surrounding lands, ruling as you please. There is a great feeling of progression, watching your city grow as you manage gold and population, and as you come to know a variety of your loyal subjects. There is an overarching plot running through the background, and you can choose to assist members of a council in order to earn your seat at the table. Unlike a dark room, Sort the Court has fully fleshed out graphics, which do a good job of representing the choices that you are faced with. The creative and aesthetically pleasing characters give you something to latch onto and an extra goal to make sure that your kingdom succeeds. The game also features excellent music and minimalist sound effects that help to bring life to the characters. Sort the Court feels like a very condensed version of the court sections in Dragon Age Inquisition. I think this concept has room for a full game where you judge evidence and make decisions that would change the world around you. Something like the Ace Attorney series flipped on its head. Sort the Court could be considered a very basic visual novel where you only ever have two options to respond instead of the more common dialogue trees. One strength that these games share is a sense of progression. Watching your village grow over time is an easy way to mark your progress through the game, and a reminder that your choices have weight, consequences, and that they matter. Something as simple as the expectation of growth can make the difference between whether you continue playing a game or not. The increase in accessibility brought on by new tech caused a shift to mobile games, where there are many independent creators making great games, but browser games should be remembered for their part in history. Browser games are a reminder that simple and effective loops can make for great games. Their place in gaming's past helped to springboard a wealth of creators. Above all, they show that if you have the drive to make a game, you should. Your audience is waiting for you. Thank you for listening. <laughs>